Welcome back to Strictly Money. Canada's top banking regulator has announced new rules are coming for certain real estate loans. This at a time when interest rates are rising, home prices are falling, and many Canadians are overextended in debt. To discuss this new guideline and the impact it could have on homeowners is David LaRock. He's president of Integrated Mortgage Planners. David, great to have you back. Thanks for having me. So I should, uh, I should clarify, these changes were announced by the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, so this is OSPI. Um, can you explain in your words what this covers, which loans it covers, and just maybe the, the high-level changes? We, we have a board that we'll bring up. Sure. There were two changes announced. The first is that <clears throat> OSPI is reducing the maximum loan to value on readvanceable mortgages from 80% down to 65%. And they're also capping the maximum loan to value on reverse mortgages at 65%. Okay. Um, so I, I, I guess the big question is, is this long overdue? I mean, should they have done this um, perhaps before we got into the situation that we're in now? And I should, I should probably add that this doesn't take effect until the end of 2023. That's right. Uh, the, the changes will be implemented on the, the fiscal year end of, of each, uh, at each lender's fiscal year end in 2023. And, and that would be either October or December of next year. Um, as far as whether this was long overdue, that's open for debate. Um, HELOCs uh, worry our regulators because they allow borrowers to, to use the HELOCs uh, to stay afloat if they run into financial difficulties. And a lot of people in my industry would argue that they've been very helpful in that sense. And in giving borrowers with a lot of equity in their homes access to ready funds, they've helped people in, in financial distress avoid getting into more serious distress. And because the, the default rates on HELOCs uh, is about half of the default rate on mortgages, um, uh, they perform very well. So um, some would argue that they're doing their job and, um, and that maybe this change uh, wasn't needed. Now, the regulator isn't talking about past tense. They're concerned about the future and they see mm -hmm. storm clouds on the horizon. And um, uh, bankers, and I guess banking regulators, uh, there's an old adage that they give you an umbrella when the sun is shining and then ask for it back as soon as it starts to rain. And OSPI sees storm clouds on the horizon with the economy slowing, house prices starting to fall, and they want to rein in their horns now in anticipation of what's to come. So um, I don't think personally that um, there was there was any urgency to do this sooner. I think the fact that they're delaying it gives the market time to absorb this news at a time when markets are already feeling a bit skittish and vulnerable. Um, so overall, I I think the timing was was relatively uh, prudent and um, uh, and 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 no, I wouldn't I wouldn't fault them for not having done this one sooner. Now with reverse mortgages, they're interesting. For most of the, of the time that reverse mortgages have been around in Canada, there's been only one provider called CHIP. Um, and in the last little while, in the last year or two, uh, there have been two competitors coming on the scene. Uh, these are very profitable mortgages. And um, uh, CHIP had the playing field to itself. They were bought by the Ontario Teachers Plan. That gives you an idea of, uh, of, 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 of the long-term viability and the attractiveness um, of their business model. And uh, not surprisingly, more competitors have entered the landscape. Now, when CHIP was running things by themselves, the maximum loan to value you could get was somewhere between 35 and 40%. And with the new competitors coming on the scene, they're pushing the envelope. They've driven down rates, which has been great for consumers, but they're also pushing loan to values up. So right now, I mean, you have to be, it's based on your age and you have to be yeah. uh, practically Methuselah, but the, 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 the highest loan to value that you can get today would cap out at about 59%. And what OSFI has said is, we're going to put a cap going forward at 65. So lenders right now, you're maxing out at 59%. You can go up to 65%, but not above that. And again, this is a preemptive move to say now that there's more competition in this space, we're going to put a cap on it that ensures there's a minimum equity buffer of 35%. And I think that is prudent because 
Reverse mortgages don't have any payments associated with them. The payments are rolled onto the mortgage and they compound with the mortgage interest over time. Uh, so a, a healthy buffer in reverse mortgages is, is prudent. Okay, um, great. I mean, this I think that's really important too to distinguish between you know these rules and which one is going to have an impact uh, more on, on others. So uh, we'll continue this conversation. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back, David. Welcome back. Um, David, we've been talking about these new um, mortgage rules that uh, are, are coming. One of the questions I did have, though, is, is what happens to those people who are above that threshold, right? So they're bringing the maximum loan to, to value down from 80% um, to 65 So what happens to those people who are still above that? Well, this this change will technically affect one out of every ten borrowers. That's how much. Uh, that's the impact that Aussie estimates. But um, that includes the unused portion of the of the home equity lines of credit. And on average, they have a utilization rate of about twenty eight percent. So the actual number of borrowers who are impacted will be lower. Basically, when your mortgage comes up for renewal after two thousand twenty three, when the lender has announced the change, so we're still a year away. And it's only when the mortgage comes up for renewal. If you have a home equity line of credit with a balance that puts your loan to value above 65%, then you have to roll that balance into the mortgage. So you don't have to pay it back, but you can't keep it as a balance outstanding on the home equity line of credit. You need to roll it into the mortgage. And if you have an unused portion of your home equity line of credit that is above 65%, that unused limit will be cut back to 65%. So by and large, it shouldn't, I mean, you can still borrow the money, you just can't borrow it on the HELOC or you lose your limit, which you weren't using anyway. So it, it shouldn't have a huge impact on the market. Okay, Thank, thanks for that clarification because I, I think some viewers will wonder uh, how it impacts them. Um, David, I read your blogs and and for viewers who, who uh, are watching, I highly recommend they follow David because you have a, a wealth of information. Um, one, one of the points that you made, and I think is a good one, is, is that OSFI has failed to address the most Im immediate risk in residential mortgages, and, and that's the stress test rules. Can you explain this? Sure. So the way the stress test works, you are qualified at the greater of the stress test rate, which today is 5.25%, or the rate on your mortgage plus 2%. So if you have a variable rate mortgage today, uh, chances are it's around 3% in the low 3% range. And that means the odds are that you're being qualified at the stress test rate of 5.25. But if you want a, a fixed rate today, let's say you're a conservative borrower and you want to play it safe. And even though fixed rates have spiked a lot, you, you want to lock in. Fixed rates today are north of 5%. So most of them anyway. So if you want a fixed rate, you're not qualified at 5.25 like you would be if you were a variable rate borrower. You're qualified at your contract rate plus 2%, which push, pushes you up into the 7% range for uh, fixed rate borrowers. That can impact affordability by up to 20%. And mm -hmm. basically what that means is if you're a stretched borrower who's trying to borrow the maximum that you can qualify for, you can qualify for more if you take a variable rate than a fixed rate. Now, I'm a proponent of variable rates. I think they make yeah. sense for a lot of people, but they certainly don't make sense for everybody. And if I had to isolate one subset of borrowers who were better suited for fixed rates, they would be borrowers who are borrowing up to the maximum of what they can qualify for. Right now, the way the stress test works, OSFI and, and, and lenders are funneling those borrowers into variable rate mortgages. I've had conversations with people and I've said, if you want a fixed rate mortgage, you can qualify for X. But if you want a variable rate mortgage, you can qualify for Y. And if a borrower is stretched, they really have no choice other than going with a subprime rate, which is much more expensive. Right. So the way the stress test is set up today, fixed rates are much harder to qualify than variable rates. That should never be the case. The conservative choice should never be harder to qualify for. They should be equal or Variable rates could be, could the qualifying rate for variable rates in some scenarios could potentially even be a little bit higher. But by and large, right now, the big risk that the residential market in Canada is facing is we're funneling borrowers into variable rates. In some cases, borrowers who are ill-suited to that option. OSPI knows this, and they did nothing to address it in their latest announcement, and they should be criticized for that. 
Okay. Um, we only have about 30 seconds in, until the end of this interview. How are you reading the, the housing market right now? Are, are you seeing it turn into a buyer's market or, and do you see more downside? I think it's a balanced market right now. Um, sellers are sticky on the way down. They're, they're reluctant to drop prices. They don't want to accept that prices have peaked. And buyers are cautious now. They don't have the same urgency to jump into the market because the cost of waiting isn't higher prices at this point, or at least they don't think so. And with more rate hikes on the horizon from the Bank of Canada, uh, a lot of buyers are saying, let me see how the market absorbs all this, uh, and then I'll reevaluate at that time. All right, David, appreciate you coming on. Thanks. Thanks, Sejal. David LaRock of Integrated Mortgage Partners. Well, that wraps up this show. To catch previous episodes, head over to thenewsforum.ca or follow the News Forum on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay well, stay wise, and stay wealthy.